London's Dockland, once the world's largest and busiest port, has been reborn to meet the challenge of the second industrial revolution. At the very heart of this brave and imaginative redevelopment is the Docklands Light Railway, a new concept in fast, clean and efficient passenger transport. The new trains, which are bright, spacious and comfortable, afford the travelling public spectacular views of London's new Dockland as they move swiftly over this new inner city highway. Docklands Light Railway embodies the most up-to-date technology in guided transportation. The trains are fully automatic in operation and the entire system is controlled from a central control room at Poplar. The very nature of automatic train operation means that if for any reason a train becomes disabled, a very specific procedure must be introduced without delay to ensure the line is cleared for traffic and complete safety of operation is maintained. Before we look at this procedure in detail, let's look at the most common cause of a train becoming disabled. The traction current, at a pressure of 750 volts DC, is supplied to each train by the conductor rail, a light sectioned aluminium rail carried on insulators and with a stainless steel contact strip on its underside. Each articulated car has four traction current collection shoes, two on each side mounted on the A and B end bogies. These shoes, which are made of copper, make contact with the underside of the conductor rail and are held in position by compressed air. At junctions and crossovers there are gaps in the conductor rail so that, while a train is passing over these points, it momentarily loses contact with the traction supply. Should, for any reason, the speed of the train be too slow to coast over this gap, it will stall and become disabled. Transit 1-4, transit base, over. Uh, now let's look at an actual incident. The train captain of car number 2 has reported to the control room supervisor that his train has become disabled between All Saints and Poplar on the up line. Yeah, Roger, I'm pretty certain off gaps, over. The control room supervisor immediately calls the duty rolling stock technician and the mobile supervisor and instructs them to attend the incident. If, however, the mobile supervisor is not available, the train captains will be expected to deal with the incident unassisted. He then instructs the train captain to secure the failed train by opening the emergency driving position and depressing the red emergency mushroom button. At this stage, the train captain should inform any passengers of the circumstances of the delay. Now it is up to the control room supervisor to decide whether an assisting train can be brought from the front or the rear. He will make this decision according to the location of the failure and traffic conditions. In this case, it has been decided to assist in the rear and adopt the push-out procedure. The following train has arrived at All Saints, the route board in the rear of the failure, and the mobile supervisor has been directed to All Saints station to join the assisting train. The control room supervisor advises the train captain of the failed train that assistance will come from the rear and that the push-out procedure will be used. The train captain of the assisting train is now given precise instructions. She is authorised to open the leading end emergency driving position, select the emergency shunt driving mode and to proceed at caution, not exceeding 20 kilometres per hour, to the location of the failed train. The train captain is making an unsignalled move and must come to a clear understanding with the control room supervisor as to which routes and points have been blocked and the precise termination point of the move authorised. 
The train captain must be prepared to stop short of any obstruction and must stop short of all points in order to check their position. The rule book requires that either the train captain of the assisting train must be accompanied by a competent person, in this case the mobile supervisor, or the failed train must be protected by a hand signalman situated at least 20 metres in the rear. The train captain of the assisting train stops a minimum of two metres clear of the failed train and observes the hand signals given. If the duty rolling stock technician has not yet arrived at the site, the train captains must couple the two trains. Unless authority is given by a rolling stock technician, the trains must not be coupled electrically. Before going any further, let's look at the autocoupler in detail. It is of the Scharfenberg type and is self-centering and self-aligning by means of handed horns below the coupler itself. In the centre of the lower coupler face is the main reservoir air connection with rubber seal. Above the autocoupler is the electronics coupler containing the 42 electrical connections for operating trains in multiple. These connections are protected by a hinged cover which swings up automatically when coupling takes place. The electronics coupler head can be racked back by means of this lever when an electrical coupling is not to be made. If an electrical coupling were made between a failed and a healthy train, the result would be the transfer of the fault to the healthy train. Returning to the push-out, each train captain must now check that the coupler isolating cock located under the offside front of the train is in the open position, handle in line with the pipe. They must then check the position of the electronics coupler, racking it back if necessary to avoid electrical connection between the failed and healthy trains. The train captain of the assisting train now moves forward at no more than three kilometers per hour and the attachment is made. She must now carry out a pull-away test by depressing the reverse button on her emergency driving position and moving the joystick to the power position. Now that the trains are mechanically coupled, the train captain of the failed train must go to his leading end emergency driving position and obtain the permission of the control room supervisor to break the seal on the sealed switch. This switch is located in the cupboard to the right of and below the emergency driving position. He places this switch in the down position. He must now depress the converter healthy lamp button to reset his auxiliary supply. This will have tripped within three minutes of the loss of traction current. Finally, after resetting the emergency mushroom, he must ensure that the air pressure lamp is illuminated on the panel. This lamp gives indication of sufficient air pressure for movement. The train captain of the failed train now reports to the control room supervisor and obtains his permission to test the push out buttons. When both these buttons are depressed simultaneously, the dump valve should operate and a distinctive flow of air will be heard. When the push-out buttons are operated, the brakes will release. The train captain now advises the control room supervisor that the push-out buttons have been tested. At this point, the control room supervisor can instruct the train captains of both trains to check that ready for driving and all doors locked lamps are illuminated on their respective trains and that door enable lamps are out. The train captain of the failed train is now instructed to depress both push out buttons and the push out can commence. Precise instructions are given to both train captains as to the extent of the move authorised, in this case to route board 4-2 at Poplar. The push-out movement must be made at extreme caution, the train captain of the failed train keeping a sharp lookout and being ready to release the push-out buttons in emergency.
If it is necessary to couple the assisting train to the failed train on a sharp curve, the train captains will have to manhandle the autocouplers into alignment before attachment. Swing each coupler vigorously until the self-centering spring is overcome, after which each coupler may easily be moved into alignment. The attachment may now be made. If the train failure is such that a brake isolation is necessary before push-out can commence, this isolation must be carried out by a rolling stock technician. This procedure involves the closure of three brake isolating cocks and the release of the spring applied parking brake. Train captains must not carry out brake isolations under any circumstances. No train on which the brakes have been isolated may be propelled on the inclines from West India Quay to Poplar or from West India Quay to West Ferry. Transit base, transit 08, come on please. Transit 08, transit base, go head over. It is essential, if the push-out procedure is to be carried out safely, efficiently and quickly, that radio communications between train captains and the control room supervisor are succinct and clearly understood. Listen carefully to the instructions you receive and repeat them to the control room supervisor. If you have not completely understood an instruction, ask the control room supervisor to repeat it. Use the radio procedure correctly. Remember, radio messages are recorded in the control room. When, in emergency, such as a train failure, it is necessary for you to go on the track, wear your high visibility vest. Parts of Docklands Light Railway run alongside British Rail mainline tracks. Should it be necessary for you to climb down to track level at these locations, remember that trains may approach at high speed on an adjacent line. Beware of the conductor rail and exposed shoe gear. These must be considered live at all times. Stand clear of trains while coupling or uncoupling and never go between vehicles unless they have been secured and immobilized. EDP key switches in the off position and keys removed. Passengers are our first consideration at all times. Pay special attention to their safety and keep them fully informed. Finally, remember, Docklands Light Railway is an automatic railway and trains may approach and pass without warning.